Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Structured Slavery for Negroes, a reply, part 1. And please listen to this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate, or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe, or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal of this video is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, in such a condition of affairs, the practical difference between the abolitionists and the sympathizer to the man who lost his slave and could not recover it was very nebulous, John Sargent Wise. And from Stephen Douglas, abolitionism proposes to destroy the right and extinguish the principle of self-government for which our forefathers waged a seven years bloody war and upon which our whole system of free government is founded. Recall from part one of this series that we looked at the subtle way the slave master is working to change the negro identity or the appellation or whatever you choose to call it and of course to deny his atrocities on those negroes by denying the slave trade as a whole we also exposed the lies of the aboriginal wannabes and how they hide behind research to propagate lies we also examined the difference between research outcomes and mere conjectures because the Aboriginal wannabes will always tell you things as if they researched them, whereas those are mere conjectures. They just come up with what they wanted people to hear. They start saying them, and then when you confront them with what are your facts, what are your proof, all you will hear is research it yourself, as though they conducted a research, whereas this is something they had from somewhere, bought into it, and then started propagating it. And then, of course, we got another channel. Kurimo Ahau with his false narratives which we are going to look at in this video as well. And in structured slavery, we talked of institutions, religion, education, manufacturing, etc. structured for the enslavement of the Negroes. Please remember we are yet to look at this in granular details but our interest is to show you the many ways the Negroes are enslaved and you have to also remember that there is no part of the negro life or existence that is not controlled by the slave masters either directly or through their brainless foot soldiers and we also looked at things like education as a tool as well as dynamic identity which are all tools used against the negroes now you might be wondering are they against education the issue about education is not about going to school but it's about the content of what you are being taught so if you were to go to school and you are taught lies, then it would mean that despite being educated, you are still uninformed, you are still an illiterate, you can only read and write, but not that you can actually put two and two together to analyze issues and situations. And then we looked at the latest Aboriginal and Native American fraud of the slave masters and the technique of ensuring everything about Negroes are destroyed with lies. So you notice that the Aboriginal wannabes always find a way to demonize and denigrate the memories of all past leaders or heroes of the Negro race, from Nat Turner to Malcolm X to Martin Luther King Jr to Marcus Garvey, they find some way to either misquote them or misinterpret what they are saying or even totally deny that they even existed, like the case of Nat Turner. And we know that their steps and the pattern they are towing follows the slave master's game. In the past, the same thing, the slave master found a way to make sure that everything about the Negroes were labeled evil. And the moment the Negroes bought into that narrative, that marked the beginning of their end. So if you still remember this comment from one VK NYC that said, to all my American brothers and sisters, research your own genealogy and stop listening to this propaganda. You are American. Your name and status has changed many times because they want to displace you 
from your land. He has a problem with Dean Calloway but can't debunk him. Look up Kurimo Ahau and many others who show you first-hand documents and images. Roots was a lie and Alex Halley had to pay dearly for his crime. These people will not win. So we're going to anchor what we're looking at today on this Kurimo Ahai and some of his videos to show you again that the aboriginal wannabes are just lies contracted by the slave masters to be used to change the negro identity one more time the same way he has been doing since the beginning of the ages that's what he has been doing he hasn't changed so following the comment from that user wherever he came from we decided to look at why he was referring people to those channels now remember the only reason he is referring the Negroes to it is because the slave master understands that the Negro believes what he is told. He also believes what the master is saying. So you will see that the only reason this individual will be referring people to those channels is just simply to say, listen to what we want you to believe. It's not like it's based on truth or facts. It's simply to tell people what they want them to believe knowing that the negro listens to and believes what the master is saying that's the technique here it doesn't change you at least notice that when we reference books he claims they are propaganda and lies then in some of their poorly scripted videos they will also reference some of the books and highlight one little place that looks hazy and doubtful they claim that this shows you that negroes are the same as indians so our interest is to make those things elaborate so that you see their lies and it will crumble in their own eyes and we challenge them to do the same too. So on looking at this channel that he referred people to, we saw a video which says American, Indian and African side by side, the people of the four continents. So this is a video on Kurimio Ahao's site. Now remember, the individual from his pictures is a straight head Indian or Native American. He is never Negro. But you see how they are now trying to make it look like the Indians and Negroes are the same when it is biologically and naturally impossible for the woolly haired Negro to have coexisted side by side with the straight head Indian. So you see them providing and presenting pictures of straight haired Indians with long hair as if they were Negroes and at the same time as if they were the aborigines of the United States or what is today the United States because at the time we were looking at the United States did not exist as a country so this will effectively even debunk some of their ludicrous claims so the same Kurimi Aho went on to also make videos around Gavi and white supremacists now remember some of their tricks are based on denigrating and demonizing the negro heroes or leaders of the past a little example of this issue is when you looked at someone like malcolm x and martin luther king jr now don't say malcolm x is a mulatto while martin luther king is not both were in the real sense of it mulattoes even though they have dominant negro genes but the challenge is the reason the slave master gives you a day to celebrate martin luther king jr but not Malcolm X, even though both fought the same causes, is because the slave master understands that the Negro listens to and believes what the master is saying. He wants the Negro to behave like Martin Luther King Jr. and not Malcolm. He believed that Malcolm was not a good slave, whereas Martin would have made a good slave if you told the line of non-violence, even when the opponent is using all kinds of violence against you. That's all. So ideally, if they can demonize or somehow prevent the negroes from knowing anything about their past heroes but instead be looking at whatever the slave master is saying and whoever the slave master tells them is the good person to follow that's what they are trying to do let us start from the image presented by karimia ahau as african and american side by side our interest is for you to see how fraudulent these people are. Remember, the slave master is never smart, but he knows where the fools live, and he is very subtle. Now, if you notice, in cases like this, they try to show you images of woolly-haired Negroes. Then, in much later, they show you monochrome or black and white images of Indians, as if they are the same. This is coded in where you have in the Bible, where Jacob painted that rod 
with different colors believing or claiming or feeling or somehow superstitiously thinking that it will make those sheep or whatever or goat or whatever he was keeping for his future father-in-law we are going to give birth to things that look like that that's just what it is because the negro is emulative so one of the games they play is they try showing you these images to deceive you that's the power of imagery you should have wondered how they got the image of whatever they show you as your savior when there was no camera camera back then so if there was no camera they will tell you oh no somebody could have sketched it at least whoever sketched it should have shown us but that's a different story altogether so our interest is to show you how ludicrous these images can be especially when you look at when cameras were discovered then you look at the fact that the place was not even called africa during the slave trade proper and again if you looked at it very well and compare it with the reality on ground for example in the northern part of africa you have arabs so when you are saying africans the best they can tell you is that the whole place were occupied by negroes at that time which is not correct but then the truth is that they just looked for a name to call the entire area but they know who they are looking for they know who their targets were but then just to take this a bit further just to show you that these people are lying and they know they are lying they can't prove whatever they are saying and remember that's why we encourage you to do the reading yourself if you allow someone else to read it and interpret it for you it will be exactly the same thing the slave master did with his religions which we are going to also debunk at some point based on these videos as well so you understand what we're saying read it yourself understand the context because they just cherry pick they pick one single small place and tell you based on this you have to believe that they don't know the meaning of research you need to bear that in mind and a little example would be by looking at this ancient map of africa you will discover that the title is ancient africa or libya so when you hear the aborigine wannabes and other slave masters foot soldiers shouting african african aborigine aborigine you have to understand that they have been conditioned that way they can't read they didn't read they didn't research so they don't have appropriate reversibility of the thought process they don't understand that the situation at that time the names of places at that time were different if you remember the fact that the negroes today were formerly known as ethiopians or guineans or grometers or colors before you got to negroes and then blacks and then african americans and of course what you have today which they are now working to see how they can change to niji or aborigine both of which do not make sense and does not change their survival position also if you looked at this 1860 map of africa you will see where it says guinea right below at the bottom of where you have gulf of guinea and you see old calabar and bight of biafra and biafra and all those areas so you see that the names have also changed our challenge to you today is to find out why the slave master does not talk about biafra and ambazonia and why the slave hunters of old the nigerian army the cameroonian army are shooting their own people over self-determination you need to ask that basic question remember the guns the bullets and the bombs come from the slave master but then their foot soldiers are being used the same way they were used to capture and sell the negroes that's the same game it hasn't changed our question to you is if you think there is nothing happening if you think we could be lying to you just ask yourself how come the slave master turns a blind eye to the atrocities being committed by their foot soldiers this was the same thing they did during the slave trade so let us reference atlas antiquos 12 maps of the ancient world for schools and colleges by dr Heinrich kippert and this was published 1876 here is a map of the area and you can see it was written ethiopia so when they are showing you a picture of american and african side by side where are they getting it from who was ethiopian then who was arabian then who was Baba? Who was Tuareg? Because all these other races are found in Africa. That should be your question to answer or ask. Let us also reference the history of slavery and the slave trade, ancient and modern, and the African slave trade and the political history of slavery in the United States. And this was published in 1860 and compiled from authentic materials by W. O. Blake. And there, 
we are shown that this is talking about African slave trade from the 15th to the 18th century. Notice that it said African. But then, if you go further down, you see where it says Negro land or Negritia, which is a synonym for what you call Nigeria today. And remember, Africa was a synonym for Libya. One thing you have to understand is that the slave master had no ideas of these places. When he discovered them, he had to give them a name. These are some of the reasons you see their foot soldiers fighting over names like Biafra or Ambazonia. Just mentioning them, they are already shooting you. They are not shooting you because they have that ability to just like that. The slave master is hiding behind and inciting them, knowing fully well that they were the same people they used for the slave trade. They were the same people they used to capture and sell the Negroes. So these Aborigine wannabe now is trying to cover that path so that they won't even get to realize themselves and reason like humans ever. That's what you're seeing. So it says uh, Negro land or Negritia is that part of the interior of Africa stretching from the great desert on the north to the unascertained commencement of Kaffa land on the south and from the Atlantic on the west to Abyssinia on the east. In fact, the entire interior of this great continent may be called the land of the Negroes. And it goes further to say, the ancients distinguished it from the comparatively civilized countries lying along the coast of the Mediterranean and the Red Sea by calling the latter Libya and the former Ethiopia. So bear this in mind, our interest is to show you their game. So when they are shouting African, we are African, we are not. They are ignorant, they have not researched, they have no idea what they are talking about. They are just buying into the slave master's narrative. Because the slave master is doing all these things. The only thing he does very well is to use his foot soldiers because of their lack of humanity and common sense. If you doubt what we're saying, we'll give you a little example. If you remember the case of someone like Alan Turing and how he was um, allegedly caused or forced to commit suicide because he was gay at that time, so they said. You notice that today, even the men, marrying men in the US and everywhere, or women marrying women, they could do anything freely in their own land. But then, in the 50s and in the 60s, the same way those foot soldiers reacted to mother their so-called siblings over self-determination is the same way they are reacting today. That should tell you that they are not really in control. They lack humanity, they lack common sense. The slave master understands this. Because ordinarily, if the slave master could conduct a referendum for Scotland and you see Ethiopia, as in modern day Ethiopia, conducting something like a referendum for Sidama, there is no way any sensible person in places like Biafra and Ambazonia and in Nigeria and Cameroon will take a gun given to him by the slave master and be shooting his so-called siblings over self-determination. If you still have any doubts that the foot soldiers were not the same people that captured and sold the Negroes, please put it in the comment section so that we take it from there. So if you can see that it says the ancients divided the place into Libya and former Ethiopia, then we want you to pay very close attention to what it says next and it says it is upon ethiopia in an special manner that the cause of slavery has fallen so if libya and ethiopia were supposedly africa as we know them today and it is saying that it is upon ethiopia in an special manner that the cause of slavery has fallen that should right there tell you that it didn't fall on both ethiopia and libya Remember, both are supposedly in what you will call Africa today, but it falls on one path. So it's incumbent upon you to find out which path, instead of just running with the slave master's narrative. Again, we ask you, what is there to benefit if they said you were aborigine? You've only succeeded in washing away the sins of the slave master by washing away the slave trade. That's why you notice that the likes of this Ahau Kurimo or whatever is telling you to show him the ships. That the ships didn't happen that the slave trade was some cooked up story whereas the victims wrote you have a queer lord you have a tobacco Gwano, you have phyllis whitley you have frederick douglas you have so many of them that wrote their experiences but you see the aboriginal one of these because they can read and because they have been tuned to the frequency of lying and propagating slave masters lies they can only lie to you 
So it's incumbent upon you to find these materials and study them yourself. That's all. And it goes further to say, Brethons and Scythians were the fellow slaves of the Ethiopian. But at last, all the other nations of the earth seem to conspire against the Negro race. And you might remember that this may be when they were just changing from Ethiopia to Negro. If you notice very well, they are talking Niji, Aborigine. There's an argument back and forth. But the slave master is doing his thing, propagating his lies, and taking stock of how far he's going. So with all these people buying into the lie and the narrative, he knows he will succeed. He's going to put it in the academic curriculum. So the next generation will grow up and hear that there was a time in history when a group of people, supposedly so-called African-Americans, were enslaved or oppressed or did everything and that they are different from the aborigine or Nijis. That's what it's supposed to do on the psyche of the next generation. So you understand the game. The slave master is never smart. He just leverages on the gullibility of the Negroes. That's all. And he goes further to say that they agreed never to enslave each other but to make the blacks the slaves of all alike so you see the conspiracy against the negroes this is why they always use somebody who looks like them to propagate their lies remember when they were bringing things like their christianity or their islam the people rejected them saying you couldn't have enslaved us and still bring us the same religions you used but now that generation is gone so the ones they have today have been conditioned to believe the lies of the slave master and going forward it says thus this race of human beings has been singled out whether owing to the accident of color or to their peculiar fitness for certain kinds of labor for infamy and misfortune and the abolition of the practice of promiscuous slavery in the modern world was purchased by the introduction of a slavery confined entirely to negroes so now when you are talking african does it include those they labeled as Libyans? Does it include Babas? Does it include Torres? Does it include Caucasians? Does it include those people you call Arabs? The answer will be no. So you see how they use the ambiguity of African to deceive you because you refuse to read. Read between the lines. Connect the dots. You can never connect the dots looking forward or looking at the moment. You have to look back in time. That's exactly what we are showing you. You notice how that guy came to call us agents simply because we are telling him the truth he doesn't want to hear whereas the truth remains the truth even if no one believes it whereas a lie is still a lie even if everyone believes it and he goes further to say the nations and tribes of negroes in africa who thus ultimately became the universal prey of europeans were themselves equally guilty in subjecting men to perpetual bondage now remember for everything the slave master wants to do, he accuses the victim of it first. You need to understand that. What they claim about Africans enslaving themselves were the non-Negroes enslaving the Negroes. So they use it and say, oh, they were enslaving themselves. They were slaves before we caught them. Remember, if you notice today, you will see the foot soldiers murdering innocent people over Biafra or Ambazonia. Now, the slave master will be telling you that they are killing themselves as if they were the same people. Whereas the slave master knows that they are not the same with the Negroes. That's the same thing. So ordinarily, you will see some so-called Nigerians or Cameroonians defending the atrocities of the slave master's food soldiers without knowing that they are actually enslaving and subjugating the Negroes. So we read a bit further down just for context sake and it says... In the most remote times, every Ethiopian man of consequence had his slaves, just as a Greek or Roman master had. Please remember as well that what they called slavery at that time was the apprenticeship system of the Negroes. If you remember in some places, they tell you that it was the Negro kings that sold their subjects to them. This is a lie because Negroes did not have kings because they were usually theocratic. And it was rulership by the priests. There is no way the priests could have been capturing the slaves. That's why if you doubt what we're saying, look at a place like Nigeria. For example, the slave master and his food soldiers now claim that the slaves were sold by the priests who they murdered after the slave trade in 1901-1902. So the people believe that today because they also can read like the aborigine wannabes. But going further down, you see where it says, 
he possessed his domestic slaves or bondmen hereditary on his property, and besides these, he was always acquiring slaves by whatever means he could, whether by purchase from slave dealers or by war with neighboring tribes. So our question to you is, how could somebody living in a hut, in a small room that could take even only one person, be getting slaves or having many slaves? Now, the reason they told you all this at that time and people bought into it was because they gave the impression that the Negroes were animals. They lived outside. There was no need for a house. They lived on trees. You need to bear that in mind. That's why you notice that when they captured them, they stripped them naked. So here you see the slaves of a Negro master, in this case, would be his own countrymen or at least men of his own race and color. Some of them born on the same spot with himself some of them captives who had been brought from a distance of a thousand miles of course the further a captive was taken from his home the more valuable he would be as having less chance of escape and therefore it would be a more common practice to sell a slave taken in war with a neighboring tribe than to return him as a laborer so near his home so our question to you is if they claimed that these people were slaves because of proximity then there will be no one free and based on that we now ask you if they claimed that the negroes had these number of slaves let's assume the europeans were capturing the negroes to be used as beasts of burden in their plantations the arabs did the same and preferably the women to be used in their harems and the eunuchs they used in their harems too. Now tell us what the Negroes were doing with theirs. So you see that the moment you look at the granularity of the whole thing, you will discover that the slave master is a liar and a subtle beast. And please, we want you to read this twice or more and see if you can understand it and put it in reality terms, what it means. It says, and just as in the cities of the civilized countries, we find the slave population often outnumbering the free. So in the villages of the interior of Africa, the Negro slaves were often more numerous than the Negro masters. So our question to you is, do you then genuinely believe that it was the same people enslaving themselves? Remember, the slave master's type of slavery was totally different from these that we are talking about. And remember, that's why he has it in his book, The Bible the Slave Master Gave You. You will see all it says and you will see some things that do not make sense like how you you can beat your slave if he doesn't die you don't get punished that means you are welcome to punish them as much as you like whereas there was no such thing in the case of the negroes remember it was the apprenticeship system their school system their way of training the next generation that became what the slave master claimed was slavery and brought his schools it is through the schools that he conditions the Negro with some level of inferiority and slave mentality, the same way he seasons them back in the days. And here you see that it says, in ancient times, the Garamantes used to sell Negroes to the Libyans. If you notice, so if they were all Africans as you are claiming, they sell Negroes to the Libyans. Note this very well. And it goes further to say, and so a great proportion of the slaves of the Carthaginians and the Egyptians must have been blacks brought northwards across the desert from Carthage and Egypt. Again, these Negroes would be exported into different countries of Southern Europe and a stray Negro might even find his way into the more Northern regions. So our question to you is, when these Aborigines wannabes are telling you that the Negroes are Aborigines, what about these ones? Were these ones sold to where? We mean the ones in Europe. The ones in Cuba, the ones in Brazil, the ones in Asia, the ones in even in Libya, in other parts of Africa, different from what was in Negro land and Guinea. So you see that their lies collapse the moment you apply common sense to it. That's all you need. And here you see that the Arabs and Moors, indeed, traversing the letter, knew something about Ethiopia or the land of the Negroes, but what knowledge they had was confined to themselves and to the Europeans. The whole of the continent to the south of the desert was an unknown and unexplored land. There were traditions of two ancient circumnavigations of the continent by the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, and down the Red Sea 
and round the Cape of Good Hope from the east, the other through the Straits of Gibraltar and round the same Cape from the west, but these traditions were vague and questionable. And please, we want you to imagine how the slave trade could have lasted that period, risen beyond the surface. And what we mean by that is for you to ask yourself, when new slaves came in, what happened? What did people say? What did people do? Remember they told you people were just being sold as if they were cattle, but this is not true. The armies you see, like the Nigerian army, the Cameroonian army, those were the slave hunting militia, they just renamed them, which will challenge you, even if you hold a PhD and you have all the degrees in research, will challenge you to debunk it. So now, these aboriginal wannabes are now coming to do the same thing the slave master had been doing. But our interest is for you to ask yourself, when they tell you, especially the so-called Hebrew Israelites, that the slave trade lasted 400 years, that God told them this or didn't tell them that. We want you to ask yourself, what were the Negroes doing at that time? Were they just captured and they go there and become slaves? What were their actions like? And before you go do your reading, you will see that when the Negroes see that their resistance is no longer of any avail, they frequently prefer death to slavery. And if they are not prevented, you may see the father rip up first the stomach of his wife, then of his children, and then his own, that they may not fall alive into the hands of the enemy. Others endeavor to save themselves by creeping into holes and remain there for several days without nourishment, where there is frequently only room sufficient to allow them to lie on their backs, and in that situation, they sometimes remain for eight days. They have assured me that if they can overcome the first three days, they may, with a little effort, continue full eight days without food. But even from these hiding places, the unfeeling barbarians know how to draw them or they make use of means to destroy them, provided with combustibles such as pitch, brimstone, etc. The soldiers try to kindle a fire before the entrance of the holes and by forcing the sinking smoke into them, the poor creatures are obliged to creep out and surrender themselves to their enemies or they are suffocated with the smoke. And then you are telling us today, no, it didn't happen, it's a fable story. And remember, if you were to show this book to the Aborigine and Indian wannabes, they will tell you it's propaganda that the slave master wrote this. Even when the accounts of Negro slaves corroborate these other accounts. And please remember that it's not every European or every Arab or every Baba that was involved in the slave trade. Many of them condemned it. Many of them justified it. The same way, if you want to understand how it could have happened, just go and investigate deeply Biafra and Ambazonia. Look at the agitations. Look at the side of the slave master. Ask yourself why his BBC, that is the biggest enemy, that is the espionage tool, is allowed to go into all the places, spy out the place, and then the people still pretend not to see. Because most of the people do not know that the BBC is actually the biggest propaganda channel in human history. And that's the biggest weapon of the slave master. If you told these aboriginal wannabes and they tell you it's propaganda, it's incumbent upon you to go read the accounts of the Negro slaves themselves. That's all you need to do. Don't listen to anybody. The slave master already knows that the easiest way to deceive the Negro is to use God and then tell him what you want him to believe. He doesn't go to read. He doesn't go to fact check. So that's why you see these people running around telling you not to listen to us but to go to this channel. So we want to show you what that channel is and we challenge them to also debunk what we are saying the same way we are debunking theirs. Let us also reference Negromania being an examination of the falsely assumed equality of the various races of men demonstrated by the investigations of a lot of people and this was by John Campbell and was published 1851 and there we are shown that hieroglyphics, painted sculptures, colossal statues and all the ornaments which characterize Egyptian temples are profusely employed. Battles, storming of castles, triumphs particularly over the Ethiopians in bracket Negroes with captive groups of that race are the subjects chiefly represented. The exterior of the temple is 117 feet wide and 86 feet high, 
but the most remarkable feature consists of four colossi which with the exception of the sphinx are the largest sculptured figures in Egypt or Nubia. Burkhart, who saw only the shoulder of one of them above the sand, conjectured from the dimensions that the hole would be 65 or 70 feet. Belzoni, after removing the sand, found it 51 feet, not including the cap, which was 14 feet of these colossi. One is still buried and another thrown down. Those are not our interest. Our interest is for you to see what it says. And it says, goes further down to say, in this region, human nature cannot be said to appear under a dignified form. Even the external aspect of the Negro is, in our eyes, especially mean, coarse, and ugly. The deep black of his complexion has been supposed by some to be connected with the barbarism of his habits. But the thick leaves, flat nose, woolly hair, and the line of the face sloping backwards are at variance with every idea of beauty and suggest very little of the exercise of intellectual energy. This is volume 3, page 37, whatever was referenced. Our interest is to ask yourself, this description here, does it match the native Indians, uh, uh, American Aborigines, that they are now telling you are the same with the Negroes? So when you listen to them, listen to these other Kurimi Ahayo, whatever their names there are, you need to listen with your ears wide open, but pay very close attention to details. They are lying. They know they are lying. It's not like they don't know. They do. But then, your attention to details will prevent their lies from getting at you. All you need to do is, when they finish their lies, analyze it. Look at what could have happened. Look at what our forefathers wrote down. That's all. The slave master is never smart, but he simply knows where the fools live. That's all. So you see how they described the Negroes at that time, claiming that everything about them were evil. It is the same thing you see the Aborigine wannabes today doing to Negro heroes or Negro leaders of the past. And if you looked up before we move on to something else, it tells us that the Negroes, on the contrary, though inferior in arts and attainments, are generally courteous, gay, and hospitable. Like all barbarous nations, they are fond of war and cruel to their enemies, but their domestic intercourse is friendly, and they receive with kindness the unprotected stranger. They are led away with fantastic superstitions, charms, witchcraft, ordeals, etc., but these errors never impel them to hate or persecute those who entertain the most opposite belief. So you see who the Negroes are. Now, you see some so-called African-Americans today claiming to be Moors. Now, if you look at further down, you see where it says, Their external aspect is well known, being marked by a deep black color, flat nose, thick lips, and coarse hair like wool. The Moors are deeply embrowned by the influence of the sun, but have not the least of the Negro color or aspect. That tells you here that they are different. Now, they are telling you the Negroes and Moors are different, but you still see some so-called African-Americans claiming to be Moors. Remember, it was the Moors, the Arabs, the Fulanese, the Barbers that actually captured and sold the Negroes. So, when they commissioned a few to claim they are what or the other, then it makes it look like it was the Negroes selling themselves. That's all they are doing. You see how they are using some people that look like Negroes to now claim that African-Americans are the same as Native Indians. And we hope you noted where it says triumphs, particularly over the Ethiopians and in bracket Negroes with captive groups of that race. So our interest is for you to see that they were even not known as Africans, typically as at the time this Karimu was referring to and telling us how it is now Aborigines or whatever things they want to now deceive everybody with. So again, we reference Atlas Geographers or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa, containing what is of most use in blue, Verarius, Celarius or whatever, volume 4. And this was published in 1714. And there, we are shown that in the area called Lower Ethiopia, we have Biafra or Biafra Kingdom right underneath it. And it shows us where it lies in the southward to the fourth degree of north latitude and it's bounded around Benin and it says by the lake and river of Niger on the north 
by the kingdoms of Bornu and Zamfara in Negroland and on the west by that of Benin and Gulf of St. Thomas. So our interest is for you to see that the names of these places have changed so they don't know what they are talking about. Remember the aborigine wannabes are just plain liars. They just want to propagate lies. They are deceiving everybody with that narrative. Let us reference the war in America, Negro Slavery and the Bible, a political religious essay by Peter Drummond and it was published 1862 and there we are shown that Ethiopians and Sabians are classed under one category but the phrase men of stature lies at the root of the matter. After America was discovered and found to be naturally so rich, it was soon perceived that the feeble race then inhabiting the country was physically incapable of that persevering and sustained labor necessary to bring out that wealth which the country was capable of producing and therefore Las Casas with a narrow and one-sided humanity worthy of the country which gave Dominic to establish the Inquisition and Loyola to found the Society of the Jesuits proposed with too much success the introduction of the Negro race from Africa or Ethiopia and they have accomplished what the aborigines we are wholly unfitted to do. So you see why the slave master is running to come and claim that the Negroes are now aborigines. They want to ultimately run away from the fact that they use Negro slave labor to build America. That's all you see them doing. So if they successfully sell the dummy, they deny the slave trade. And then, like they did in Egypt, it will now be how they built the US as well. And it goes further to say, for while the native races invariably broke down under the labor, to which they were subjected after America had been newly discovered and in many cases have entirely disappeared from the face of the earth, the sturdy negro has stood the test and increased in number, notwithstanding the rigorous condition in which he has been placed, a sure proof that God has some better thing for him in view. So you note how they brought God into the narrative. And see what goes on from there and it says in chains they shall come over this would indicate that the Negroes will assert their liberty or rather that God will do it for them so you see how they deceive the Negroes since that time till today they've been using the same God to deceive them so if you looked at Karimio Ahau's narrative you will see that he's coloring it with God too because everyone now knows that to deceive the Negro all you need is to use God and then cover your lies with it and it goes further to say, while they are in a state of slavery, they shall make supplication. This is the third time the Ethiopian is found in the attitude of prayer. And this strongly points out that his hope is in God alone. And this also points to the completeness of the liberty he will obtain. So you see how the slave master sells the dummy. Now tell us where they saw God and he told them all this. But they know that the Negro listens to what the master is saying, so they can lie as much as they want. All they need is to find a place to squeeze God into it, and the Negro will believe, not knowing that the slave master's gods are not the same as the creator of heaven and earth. And you see how the Negroes bought into that narrative at that time too, the same way you see them almost buying into the aboriginal narrative. And it says, God had so constituted this race, which in the times of the scriptures were called Ethiopians, and which we call Negroes from their color that they might become the inhabitants of the equatorial or warm regions of the earth. These black people, however, were placed in Africa alone, which is almost entirely a thorid region, and as America had also a large warm region with no Negroes in it, it was necessary that the purpose of God might be fulfilled. The Ethiopians should be sent to it, and therefore we are directly told here that God sent them there. You see, that's how they deceived them then. They are still using the same formula till today. And listen to what the Negroes said at that time. And it says, We were sent here, they will argue, by the omnipotent governor of the world and everything in it. And as we alone can live in such a country and cultivate it, so we shall assume it as our own, as being God's gift to us. And therefore, we shall not only cultivate it, but we shall also rule and govern it. Not that we will deny to other men the liberty of living in it. 
whether they may be engaged in the pursuits of religion, of commerce, or of mere curiosity, but no man shall remain in it as a slaveholder or trafficker in slaves, whether black or white. Our country shall be free to other men as it is to ourselves, because it is God's country, but other men shall not rule in it. So you see how they have been deceiving them till today. So they are still waiting for the sky daddy to come and free them. That's why you see, instead of now freeing them, instead of demanding for things that make sense, somebody is wasting energy and time telling them that they are aborigine and that the slave trade was a fictional story. So you see how unfortunate it is, especially these aborigine and Indian wannabes and their lies. You can see these are how Kurimo and the type of lies he is propagating. Let us also reference The Mind of the Negro, an intellectual history of Afro-Americans by E. L. E. Thorpe and it was published in 1961 and there we are shown that practically everyone knows too that Negroes were first brought to the English settlements in 1619 and that from Virginia they slowly appeared in all of the colonies. Probably the first slaves to be brought to what is now the United States of America came in 1526 this was a Spanish settlement in South Carolina headed by the colonizer Lucas Vaquez de Ayelon or whatever and it included about 600 persons and 6 of whom were Negro slaves. Within 8 months, disease, dissension and Indian hostility caused this project to be abandoned. The Spaniards go into Haiti while the slaves were left among the Indians. The later thoughts became the first permanent non-Indian settlers within the present limits of the United States of America. Now you notice that this makes it clear that the 1619 is only referring to the English settlements. But you see how they have turned the whole thing around and instead of these aboriginal wannabes to face the wrongs being done to the Negro race, they now started joining the slave master to say oh the slave trade didn't happen, that you are aborigine there proves that you are an inferior human being because if you have been there all the years even the Indians have record of being there you have no single record of being there but you are buying into the ugly and poorly scripted slave masters narrative and so here it gives us a little idea about figures and it says the slave trade increased and intensified wars in Europe America and Africa as from 5 to 15 million Africans were brought out of Africa Negroes often compared the manner of their enslavement with piracy and they were very elevated when on January 1, 1808, the Federal Act went into effect prohibiting the slave trade. Little did they realize then how close the newly invented cotton gene would come to making this law virtually a dead letter. For so great became the South's need for labor that the smuggling in of slaves from Africa continued to the very eve of the Civil War. Further legislation against the African trade, coupled with declining profits from tobacco raising in the Upper South, while cotton was becoming in the Lower South erected a very large domestic slave trade. In 1836, Virginia alone exported approximately 120,000 bondsmen to the lower south. Our interest is for you to see what they are now telling you didn't happen, that they are all well documented and you could do yourself the favor of reading the materials yourself. Don't listen to them. These are people paid to misinform everyone. And here it tells us that the Haitian revolt began in 1791 and was dominated by the personality and leadership of Toussaint L. Overture from 1794 to 1800. The effect of this revolt on slavery in the United States was much more widespread than is commonly known. So you see that the aboriginal wannabe is claiming that slave trade is fictional are just liars. Let us also reference American Indian stories by Zitkala S.A. Gertrude Bonin, Dakota Sioux Indian and it was published in 1921. So our interest is in just the picture. And it says is a Dakota Sioux Indian. We challenge you to now explain to us how this person and the woolly head Negro can be the same. Now, these Aboriginal wannabes are using the mulattoes that result from when a Negro man sleeps with a Negro woman and they produce a child. 
so that's what they're using if you notice they will always show you some so-called black and white pictures of supposedly indians they were very few so if you want to understand this ask them those ones showing you the pictures to show you where their numbers should be now where they are concentrated because if you look at all the pictures from the one used by Dane to the one used by young pharaoh to these ones being used by kurimuya ahai and one thing you can do is to find out the background of these people what's their educational levels and what type of research or what kind of information or who they were before now whatever information you can find about them would help you understand whether or not they are lying and whether or not they are deliberately doing it let us also reference history of the liverpool privateers and letters of mark with an account of the liverpool slave trade by goma williams and this was published in 1897 and there we are shown that after passing through various scenes of danger and difficulty he reached home in november 1751 after a voyage of 14 months in july 1752 he sailed again from liverpool commander of the new slave ship african so he was asking you to show him the ships how can somebody sitting in his house be asking you to show him something that should be in the high seas or in the seas or in the bottom of the oceans or whatever they destroy them in now again you see that all they are doing is to deceive you and part of the reason they are doing it is so that the slave master can wash himself clean of his atrocities against the negro vis-a-vis -vis the slave trade again here it tells us that in 1766 divine captain simmons returned from a voyage to Boni. Boni is where the Nigerian state ships its liquefied natural gas from today in Nigeria. You can go and investigate and verify so you understand why they are killing people over Biafra. You know that the foot soldiers lack humanity and common sense already. So going forward it tells us that on the coast of Africa and Dominica in the West Indies with 400 slaves having accomplished the round voyage in 7 months and 10 days and apparently broken the record the market value of the cargo could not have been less than 13,000 pounds as will be seen from the following table showing the average price of negroes sold at charleston jamaica grenada totola and dominica during seven years so he provided the years and then he says and from the account sales of negroes imported in the ship african so if you think these people from Karimo, Ohio to Dane and all the other Aboriginal wannabes do not have these books, it's a lie. They will tell you it's propaganda, but they forget that the accounts of the Negroes themselves already debunk their own false narrative. And here we see where it says copy of account sales of Negroes, sales of 268 Negroes slaves imported in the ship African Captain Thomas Trader from Malemba on the account and risk of Messiah's John Cole and Co, owners of the said ship merchants in Liverpool. Our interest is to show you that the Aborigines and Indian wannabes are specially paid to misinform you because there is no benefit in saying you are Aborigines. It was the same way they changed from colored to Negroes, from Negroes to Blacks, from Blacks to African, and now they are coming to change you to Niji or Aborigine. It is the game, it, it doesn't change. The slave master is never smart. It's just that people refuse to use their brains, that's all. Let us also reference a tribute for the Negro being a vindication of the moral, intellectual and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind with particular reference to the African race illustrated by numerous scriptural sketches, facts, anecdotes, etc and this was by Wilson Amistad and it was published 1848. Our interest is for you to see how deep the rabbit hole could be and that these aboriginal wannabes are deliberately commissioned to lie. The slave master has done it this way severally. Why not ask yourself how he was able to change the negro identity from Ethiopian to Guinean to Grometa to colored to negro to African American and now trying to change it to Niji or Aborigine or Indian and people are still watching him do it right there in their very eyes you can imagine and here he tells us that of all the races of men says Dr. Channing the African is the mildest and most susceptible of attachment 
He loves where the European would hate. He watches the life of a master whom the North American Indian in like circumstances would starve in the heart. So they are now telling you that these same people that they are telling you were wonderful slaves, let's take it like that, are now the same with these ones that would have killed the master. Remember, if the Negroes were as barbarous as the slave master claims, there is no way the slave master would have taken him to his place, put him in his house, and he doesn't kill the slave master. So if you notice some of the instances where the slaves murdered their masters, you will see how the slave master reacted to them. And those are the origins of things like autopsy and things like that. Their legal system is also structured along the same line, such that if the master died and they can accuse the slave and choose what to say. And here you see where it says, the purpose of the present volume in contradiction to the idea of the Negro being designed only for a servile condition is to demonstrate that the several inhabitants of Africa are capable of occupying a position in society very superior to that which has been generally assigned to them and which they now mostly occupy, that they are possessed of intelligent and reflecting minds and however barren these may have been rendered by hard usage and have become indeed as fountains scaled that they are still neither unwatered by the rivers of intellect nor the pure and gentle streams of natural affection by a relation of facts principally of a biographical nature many of them now published for the first time i hope to counteract that deeply rooted prejudice the growth of centuries which whatever but our interest is for you to see who these people are so all these things you are seeing aboriginal you notice the guy that comes here to tell us that we are lying he can't debunk these books and he can never tell you what is the advantage of claiming that you are aboriginal all these things are designed to claim that the negroes are inferior that's all that's why the slave master wakes up and chooses what to call the negro at any moment and remember we had always told you that our choice of using the negro was the one we found very all-encompassing because it includes those sold to haiti it includes those sold to brazil it includes those sold to europe those sold to iran those sold to saudi arabia turkey and all those places as against using african-american that doesn't make sense because it only refers to a tiny portion which is the house negroes they would be called because that's what these people are aspiring to be they are so happy to be that they forget that there were negroes sold to europe as well they can't explain those and here again we see where it says the fact has been strongly maintained by some that they were negroes you could look for this material and you get the right context if we form an opinion of them from the accounts left us by herodotus and other writers who say that they were woolly-haired blacks with projecting leaves. We cannot doubt that they were perfect Negroes. Volney assumes it as a settled point that this was really the case. But the authority of Herodotus is of most weight as he traveled in Egypt and was therefore well acquainted from his own observation with the appearance of the people and it is well known that he is generally very faithful in relating the facts and describing the objects which fell under his personal observation. In his account of the people of cultures, he says that they were a colony of Egyptians and supports his opinion by this argument that they were black in complexion and woolly haired. These are the exact words translated used in his description of undoubted Negroes, but neither the Copts their descendants nor the mummies of which so many thousands are yet extant as unquestionable witnesses allow the supposition to be maintained that their general complexion was black that the ancient ethiopians were black i have stated most eminent writers are agreed upon hence the scripture query can the ethiopian change his color now it is a fact of history that egypt and ethiopia were originally peopled contemporaneously by the brothers Mizraim and Kush and were long confederated under one government, being a similar people in politics and literature, etc. Those are not all our interests. Our interest is for you to see that they were being called Ethiopians at that time 
and that Negro came on later. But then you see how they were used interchangeably. But today, you can't even mention the former appellations of the Negro. But then they are coming with a new one, Aborigine and Niji. And then accusing anyone that brings up the fact that they are liars of being an agent. Agent of who? For what? Now, if you can tell us what the Negroes stand to benefit from your Aborigine narrative, we want to hear it. We want to hear what you're saying or what you're thinking. It says they want to take your land. Our question to you is, when you hear some people say Egypt and Kemet, have you wondered why they talk about that and not looking for places where the Negroes are and focusing on them at least to have a portion of this earth retained by Negroes? They are losing everywhere. They are slaves everywhere they are. And you have seen from recorded history that the slave master's conspiracy with his foot soldiers is that the Negroes must be made slaves wherever they are found, which we can prove to you, even with contemporary happenings. Look at Biafra, look at Ambazonia, and that should tell you. Let us also reference the Negro Races, a sociological study, volume 1, by Jerome Dowd, and it was published in 1907. And there, we are told that the history of the Negro has proved the correctness of this theory. In no instance has he evinced other than a retrogression when once freed from restraint, like a horse without harness, he runs wild. But if harnessed, no animal is more useful. Unfortunately, this is contrary to public opinion in England, where the vox populi assumes the right of dictation upon mothers and men in which it had had no experience. The English insists upon their own wits and measures as the scales for human excellence and it has been directed by the multitude inexperienced in the negro personally that he had been a badly treated brother that he is a worthy member of the human family placed in an inferior position through the prejudice and ignorance of the white man with whom he should be upon equality the negro has been and still is thoroughly misunderstood However severely we may condemn the horrible system of slavery, the results of emancipation have proved that the Negro does not appreciate the blessings of freedom, nor does he show the slightest feeling of gratitude to the hand that broke the rivets of his fetters. So you see how some people are driving the Negro back into continued servitude. But yet, someone is telling you that slave trade was fiction, even as the Negroes are still slaves till today, which we shall prove to you. Is a different story altogether but then we want you to see the records so when those aborigine and indian wannabes contracted to misinform you tell you that their slave trade was fiction just ask them what proof they have against the accounts of the former negro slaves like equiano lord like um Otobakugano, like phyllis whitley like frederick douglas like kataji woodson the father of negro history all those people wrote their records, wrote down things you should read, but then you are listening to somebody born yesterday. Again, we ask you, what does it cost you to do a basic research, read the historical books yourself, and forget listening to Aborigine and Indian wannabes? What is the benefit of it? And here we see where it says, the final question remains, why was the Negro first introduced into our colonies and to America? So we challenge you to look for these materials and read them yourself. And then when you listen to this Kurimio Ahau or the likes of them, you will know that they are lying. They are masters and lies. That's why they will lie brazenly. That's the slave master. If you want to understand how the slave master operates, we challenge you to look at Biafra and Ambazonia. Look at somebody like Namde Kano. Look at the Biafra agitation and ask yourself, what was his crime? Just asking for self-determination or asking that roads be built became treason because the slave master hiding behind his brainless foot soldiers will determine what offense you committed if they are not happy with you. That's exactly how the slavery works. If you doubt what we're saying, if you know any Nigerian around you that knows about this agitation, ask them to tell you what is Nandekano's crime. That's all you need to do. Just ask that simple question and see how they disgrace themselves, even some that are lawyers. Because this whole thing is controlled by the Fulani, who were the foot soldiers to the slave masters. Now, if you are doubting us, the army was a slave hunting militia. It was only renamed Nigerian Army in 1863. All you need to do is 
conduct basic research you see what we are telling you it is the slave trade hidden in plain sight that's why the slave master pretends not to see he is supplying the weapons the logistics and all the things used by his foot soldiers against the negroes right there in your very face and he goes further to say the sun is the great arbitrator between the white and the black man there are productions necessary to civilized countries that can alone be cultivated in tropical climates where the white man cannot live if exposed to labor in the sun thus such fertile countries as the west indies and portions of america being without a native population the negro was originally imported as a slave to fulfill the conditions of a laborer in his own country he was a wild savage and enslaved his brother man he thus became a victim of his own system to the institution of slavery that is indigenous to the soil of africa and that has not been taught to the african by the white man as is currently reported but that has ever been the peculiar characteristics of african tribes in the state of slavery the negro was compelled to work and through his labor every country prospered where he had been introduced he was suddenly freed and from that moment he refused to work and instead of being a useful member of society he not only became a useless burden to the community but a plotter and intriguer imbued with the deadly hatred of the white man who had generously declared him free now as the negro was originally imported as a laborer but now refuses to labor it is evident that he is a lamentable failure you see how people want to determine how you live your life and still claim that they are right but then they are coming now to tell you that it was even a fiction that it happened at all and then some people are buying into it you see why we tell you till tomorrow that both karim wahayo or whatever his name is pronounced as or the Nkalowe, those are paid by the slave masters to misinform the negroes because the slave master believes that the negro does not use his brains he listens to whatever is being told if you started telling the negro that there is a ladder being built to take them to heaven tomorrow they're going to believe it that's the truth so they only need to look for somebody that looks like them if you notice despite karimio not looking like a negro but an indian but some negroes still buy into his lies which is unfortunate anyways and going further he says either he must be compelled to work by some stringent law against vagrancy or these beautiful countries that prospered under the condition of negro forced industry must yield to ruin under negro freedom and idle independence and he says for an example of the results look to saint domingo under peculiar guidance and subject to a certain restant the negro may be an important and most useful being but if treated as an englishman he will affect the vices but none of the virtues of civilization and his natural good qualities will be lost in his attempt to become a white man so our interest is to ask these aboriginal wannabes from karimu to dane to explain to you how the slave trade could have been fictional when all the records are showing it including the accounts of our forefathers so you see that it is just mere feel good the same way going to church makes people feel good going to mosque makes them feel good as against through commune with the most high that's what it's happening here they just feel good that they are being called aborigines that's all it's not like it's going to change their survival position or do anything for them you see how the slave master operates the same thing he did with Jesse Jackson in 1988 is what he's trying to do now and people still can read between the lines and in the event you believe the god part and the deception they use god to do let us reference travels into the inland parts of africa containing a description of the several nations of the space of 600 miles up the river gambia their trade habits customs language manners religion and government power disposition and characters of some negro princes with a particular account of job ben solomon a fully that's fulani who was in England in the year 1733 and known by the name of the African, to which is added Captain Steeb's voyage up the Gambia in the year 1723 to make discoveries with an accurate map of the river taken on the spot and many other copper plates 
and this was by Francis Moore and it was published 1788 and there we are shown that that beyond the desert of Libya lies the land of Negroes which is chiefly a level sandy soil except those parts upon the river Niger or near some river or running stream which was very fruitful but our interest is for you to see where Negro land was and for you to understand that it is not the entire area you know as Africa today it's much smaller than that and in conclusion let us leave you with a challenge to the aborigine wannabes to the Indian wannabes and to those that claim that the slave trade was fictional the Middle Passage was fictional according to Dane and the likes of Karimo and Howe. Our interest is for you to challenge them with this question and see what they tell you. And we are going to do that by referencing some historical account of Guinea, its situation, produce and the general disposition of its inhabitants with an inquiry into the rise and progress of the slave trade, its nature and lamentable effects by Anthony Benezet and it was published 1788. And there we are shown that before we go into the content proper, you see that logo of Am I Not a Man and a Brother. Remember, some of these people fought at the risk of their lives to end the slave trade. And then you are listening to a clown telling you today that it was fictional. You can imagine how denigrating that would be to the memory of those that died because of it. And so our challenge to the Indian and Aboriginal wannabes is to show us one place where the accounts they are claiming were written as in the group that claimed that the Negroes were stolen from America, shipped to Africa, shipped to Europe and then back to America should please tell us where they got it from. At least one person, one human minded person would have written it down somewhere. At least the Quakers. The abolitionists, if you don't know about them, those were the groups that fought against the slave trade, the Quakers and the abolitionists. You can research it yourself. And it was a risky thing to be an abolitionist at that time. So we want the aborigine wannabes and the Indians and the, the likes of Karim Howe or Dan Calloway to show us one record, one single record that shows that the slaves were captured from the Americas. That's all we wanted them to do so that that will prove who is lying and who is an agent of the slave master and here it tells us that usage of the negroes when they arrive in the west indies and hundred thousand negroes brought from guinea every year to the english colonies the number of negroes who die in the passage and seasoning there are properly speaking murdered by the persecution of the infamous traffic remarks on its travel effects and tendency so our interest is to show you what they wrote about these things at that time remember in our last video you also saw that there were people that died in seasoning seasoning is where they now condition them to become slaves and i believe that god created them to be so if you notice the so-called um, hebrew israelites today telling you god punished them you should ask yourself who told them that where did they see god so you see it's just based on somebody else said stories they had and they bought into it because the slave master understands that the Negro listens to what he is being told. He doesn't use his own brains to decipher stuff. So that's one trick the slave master plays. You see these ones coming with Aborigine. You see those claiming to be Moors. You see some claiming to be from Israel. If you notice, the group is so divided by this religious thing. That's where the slave master now leverage on to now say oh no they are now aborigines because he figured he could also deny his own atrocities against the negroes especially now that a lot of people are waking up to the folly of the slave masters religions be it islam or christianity or even judaism as it were now don't get us wrong we have never said there was no creator that created heaven and earth all we have said is that the slave master brought the golden calf not the true thing because he knows that with the golden calf you will be deceiving yourself worshipping his calf while he will be subjugating and enslaving you that's a very simple trick and he goes on to say when the vessels arrive at their destined port in the colonies the poor negroes are to be disposed of to the planters remember the planters the u.s was a plantation so when you are looking at it don't look at it as a country or anything bigger than what it is it was a plantation and it still belongs to those slave hunting countries of the past that's why you notice that 
the BBC will not talk about Biafra or Ambazonia the same way the VOA will not. The same way they all pretend not to see what their foot soldiers are doing there. The same way the AU will not. That's the same game. So tomorrow you will say, oh, it's Africans, they like killing themselves. When you are right there seeing the slave master doing what he has been doing and then deceiving you with aborigine. And it goes further to say, and here they are again exposed naked without any distinction of sexes to the brutal examination of their purchasers and this it may well be judged is to many another occasion of deep distress add to this that near connection must now again be separated to go with their several purchasers this must be deeply affecting to all but such whose hearts are seared by the love of gain mothers are seen hanging over their daughters bedewing their naked breasts with tears and daughters clinging to their parents not knowing what new stage of distress must follow their separation or whether they shall ever meet again and here what sympathy what commiseration do they meet with why indeed if they will not separate as readily as their owners think proper the weeper is called for. You see how unfortunate it is that somebody will wake up today to be telling you that those things are fiction. All you need to do is to read the accounts of the former slaves. That's all. It debunks their lies. Stop allowing yourself to be deceived by God. Because if he was the same creator of heaven and earth that the slave master was bringing, he would have also been subject to the laws of the Most High. Remember, the laws of their religions are based on what they want. The same way we asked you to tell us what was Nandikano's crime in the Biafra agitation. That's how we want you to find out how the slave master changes laws he claims are the laws of God, directly and indirectly. So that should tell you that both gods or Allah of the slave masters were the same people making their own deities in their own image. Because if he was the same creator of heaven and earth, they would have all been the same and not different. This one telling you something here. This one telling you another thing there. The names changing overnight. And you see how they are doing it. That's the game. They understand that the Negro believes what he is told. And the Negro is very religious. Now, all they needed to do was to deceive the Negro away from the creator of heaven and earth. And replace it with a golden calf. Knowing that that will be powerless. And for those who think that the Negroes were just cattle that you could have just sold and they sit there looking at you, here is a little account that he provides here and he says, I shall only mention one example of this kind by which the reader may judge of the rest. It is in Ashley's collection, volume 2, page 449, related by John Atkins, sojourn on board Admiral Ogle's squadron of one Harden, master of a vessel, in which several of the men slaves and women slaves attempted to rise in order to recover their liberty, some of whom the master of his own authority sentenced to cruel death, making them first eat the heart and liver of one of those he had killed. The women he hoisted by the thumbs, whipped and slashed with knives before the other slaves till they died. So our interest is to show you how brutal they were. As detestable and shocking as this may appear to such whose hearts are not yet hardened by the practice of that cruelty which the love of wealth by degrees introduced into the human mind, it will not be strange to those who have been concerned or employed in the trade. But again, we want you to look at Biafra and Ambazonia. Ask yourself if the people were the same. Why will an army, an entire army, go and be killing innocent people over Biafra or over Ambazonia? Take a little step and research the bite of Biafra, research the bite of Benin. It will give you an idea of what is going on. Just ask yourself how foolish can it be that someone comes to tell you to build a road or build a school in a place where humans are supposedly living and you take a gun made by the slave masters and be killing them and say they are terrorists. That should tell you right there that those were the slave hunters of old. We read this little portion for you to understand what games they are playing. You don't need to believe us. We didn't say you should believe us. We are only asking you to find time to look for these materials. Study them yourself. If the Aborigine and Indian wannabes tell you it's propaganda, just ask them, where are you getting your own? 
Because if you notice, what they do is they pick up one book, look for one tiny line and tell you that this thing here it means this. Simply because the slave master has conditioned them to propagate the lies and tells them that the Negro believes whatever he's told. That's all. The slave master won't say it himself because he knows it will be ludicrous and he wants to be seen as superhuman. So he would rather use a Negro. That's why you see some of these aboriginal wannabes telling you that the slave trade was fictional. Even when they saw the accounts of the lives of Equiano, the lives of Otobakugano, the lives of Kataju was implied and name it, many Negroes wrote, but they won't read. Even if they read, they would say, no, this is propaganda. What is the real thing is if we believed that the Negroes were aboriginal. You can imagine how ludicrous that can be. And here we come to the end of this edition of Structured Slavery for Negroes, a reply, part one. We thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to conduct your own research or at least look for these materials, study them yourself and do not allow yourself to be swayed by any wind that comes. The slave master is a subtle beast, but he is never smart, but he knows where the fools live. Thank you very much once again for listening. Peace.